Hello, this is Dr. Michael Shear with the Learn Lodi, a free resource on how to market treatment plan place and maintain a locator over denture implants. The purpose of this video is to describe the clinical situations of when you would want to consider using the Zest locator over denture system healing abutment. The healing abutment has been developed for the Lodi implants out of request of many clinicians requesting a healing abutment for the Lodi over denture system. Principally, there's two reasons why one would want a healing abutment. First and foremost, if a surgeon uh, or a clinician, general dentist, etc., were going ahead and placing a Lodi overdenture implant, and he or she uh, got into a situation where maybe the torque wasn't above 30 newton centimeters, or heck, the clinician just said, you know what? I'm not so crazy about this idea about immediate loading. It's my first case or two. Let me play it safe. L locator overdenture. Uh, implant system healing abutment would be perfect for those clinical situations of being extra cautious. What's nice about the healing abutment is, is it doesn't have a retentive design, which um, in this case would be able to provide a protective mechanism for the top portion of the Lodi implant, the external hex and screw assembly, without having any additional grab of the locator attachment from the side. The second major clinical reason or clinical example of when one would want a healing abutment is in the case in point where a surgical account, either a oral surgeon, periodontist, or implantologist, a referral network is working with a group of uh, restorative dentists that are not placing implants. In this situation, that surgical account, oral surgeon, periodontist, implantologist, would want to have a healing abutment in many times where he or she were to say, okay, I've got the implants placed, Dr. So-and-so. I'm you know, sending you back the patient. Uh, it has healing abutments on there, and here's the little vial package uh, of the, um, the locator overdenture uh, actual abutment. Um, just give this, uh, you know, give this to the patient, change them out, and, and then you can do your pickup right then and there. Uh, uh, certainly, those both of, of those clinical situations is one the primary reason where we would uh, be encountering the need for a healing abutment. So, in this video, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate the clinical situation of where a clinician were to encounter a situation where they would just say, you know what, I want to be extra cautious. Low bone density situation, a low torque, etc. So, let's take a moment and just review how the healing abutment is designed and how we work with them. As you see here, the locator over denture system has two main um, cuff heights, the 2.5 or the 4.0 millimeter cuffs. So let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see that clear. There we go, bring them right here front and center, just like so, just like so. Now you'll see here that, oh, down a little bit more, there we go. You'll see here that, of course, Zest has matched the 4 millimeter cuff height of the um, healing abutment to the locator, as well as the 2.5 millimeter cuff height healing abutment and the locator assembly. Now, we're very used to using the core tool to insert our locator abutments, and you know, like we're familiar with, you can use the white snap cap that'll help it prevent it from falling in the patient's mouth. Now, what you can't do is, is use the core tool for the healing abutment. The healing abutment uses a standard 050 hex insert or a 048 tapered insert so that way it'll hold just with a taper friction fit. Same thing applies to the 40 millimeter healing abutment. Standard hex driver can be used. If you don't have a tapered hex driver, you can use a standard vertical one, but it will fall out. So I do recommend using the 048 taper. Um, this is a very nice um, instrument. So let's go ahead and simulate like we're placing a couple of locator overdenture abutments on top of these implants. Just for sake of the video, I've already placed these four implants on this mandible. So we're inserting and we're inserting. I'll start with the posterior one here first. I'm inserting. There we go. Okay. And we're putting that down, maybe a little bit more. Okay. Feels pretty snug to me. We've done a torque test of the implant. Everything here feels pretty good. I feel comfortable with that. Now, the clinician were to start inserting a second healing or a locator abutment. And we're inserting, we're inserting, we're inserting. And they go, oh gosh, this is spinning on me. So they say, well, you know, what I better do is go ahead and remove that locator 
abutment. I am going to put a healing abutment on this implant, just like so. Inserting it on top of the locator implant. And by the way, there you go. It's very compatible, very similar to what you would see with the actual locator abutment. Just has a smooth surface, so that way any material, whether it's denture or soft reliner, does not grab on that. It's merely acting as a protective mechanism for the implant surface itself. So that's using the 2.5 millimeter as an example, and I'll run through the similar situation um, with the other side, but using the 4.0 millimeter as I take my little trusty core tool and insert my locator abutment. I'm inserting. Okay, that one feels pretty good. I can pop that one out. I'm doing good there. What happens if I take another abutment? Well, you know, my torque here is not so good. It's a spinner, so let's go ahead and remove that. Okay, implant abutment comes out and we're inserting the four millimeter healing abutment in its place. And nice and snug. Now clearly uh, you can see here that on this mandible I have adjusted the mandible on this side to simulate like I have a deeper tissue situation. Most of the time a clinician will encounter uh, 4 millimeter tissue depth and the need to have a 4.0 millimeter cuff height or a 4.0 millimeter healing abutment in maxillary arch situations and most of the time the 2.5 uh, millimeter cuff height in mandibular arch situations. So now of course this would not be a real clinical example what I would typically do here is just go ahead and uh, remove the other one and we would supplement by placing the other 2.5 millimeter cuff height healing abutment onto our patient and you can see here that one is definitely there you go in place Okay, and now finally, as I change out this other one, it gives me an opportunity to show you how the healing abutments are packaged. It comes in a um, closed um, plastic package like this. As you tear it open here, and you'll see inside of here that you have your healing abutment in a sterile vial, as well as the manufacturer's instructions, as well as all of the information related to the actual abutment. Um, now your assistant would be removing this and then dropping this onto your surgical tray just like every other abutment. And then at this point you can take your 04A taper or 050 hex and take that and insert it onto your implant. But let's go ahead and we need to remove the um, locator that's on our clinical example right now. And I'm going to unscrew, unscrew, unscrew. and then the locator button comes out and the four millimeter 048 taper or 050 hex four millimeter healing abutment is placed on in its place and now at this point um, that you know if you're the surgeon placing these implants uh, or the the restorative dentist that's receiving these you can unscrew them put on your traditional locator abutments or, or in this clinical example where we're simulating that we have a few spinners or, or a couple of implants that have you know less than 30 newton centimeters of torque say maybe right around 20 22 23 it's uh, clinically relevant because i encounter this not on a regular basis, but enough where I would see the need for a, a healing abutment like this. Uh, the benefit at this point is, is that you could with ease use a soft liner, fill your denture over the soft liner, and then um, uh, have predictable soft tissue results as well as not having that little notch uh, of the locator on the side or the big hole on the center, reducing the chance of micromotion. So this has been a clinical demonstration video, technique de demonstration video of the locator healing abutment. Uh, I'm Michael Shearer. This is Learn Lodi, a free resource on how to market, treatment plan, place, and maintain locator overdenture implants. Thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for additional videos coming in the future. Have a great day. Bye-bye.